Hello, everyone. Welcome to the English devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. Let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before your holy presence, giving you thanks for this day that you have given us. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning, for giving us life and health and blessing us abundantly. Father, I ask that there is any sin in my heart, anything that I have done to displease you, that you will clean me and wash me white as snow. Forgive me of my sins and offenses against you. Father God, we glorify your holy name because you sustain us. You are our refuge and we glorify you. We praise you, Lord. When trials and things of this world come battling against us, we can turn to you. When we are desperate in need of answers and guidance, we can turn to you. When the joys of life come and we are excited and uplifted, it is because of you. Father, I thank you and I praise you for being our all in all, for being our everything. Thank you, Father, for your love and compassion towards us. Thank you, Father God, because you never reject us. You never turn away from us. Thank you, Father, for your sustenance. Thank you because you sustain and you give life and you give abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's devotional is titled, God is in Control. It was written by Julio Fernandez and translated by Stacy Martinez. Our biblical base comes from Psalms 27, 1 through 6. So says the word of God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. When we were in the region of Baracoa in Cuba, plans were made to hold a prayer service to wait on the promise of the Holy Spirit. The whole church was overjoyed. However, something unexpected happened. The bishop, Eugenio Garcia, who had been traveling from Camagüey to preside over the service, was involved in an accident. Thanks to the mercy of God, he did not lose his life, but the incident did prevent him from attending the services. It seemed that everything was falling apart because in those days, no official could oversee the services alone. There had to be at least two presiding officials. All the brethren began to implore the Lord's help in prayer and to make arrangements for Bishop Emilio Gonzalez to come instead. And God answered our prayers. 
while brother Emilio was traveling to Boma along with others who accompanied him, he received these words from God, I am the Lord of heaven's armies, the one who has never lost a battle. For the glory of God in those services in which 19 people were waiting, 16 were filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Isaiah 46, 9. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, what a beautiful reminder that God is in control when life seems to be falling apart because bad things keep happening or the unexpected happens. God has a plan. God is going to see the good of the church, the good of you and me. He has a plan. Cry out to him. Go to him in prayer. Lay all of your needs at his feet because he is in control and his plan is far better than what you and I could ever hope for. My brothers and sisters, God is going to work for his honor and his glory. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. In your situation, God is going to work. Give him honor and glory and praise that he is due. Amen. May the Lord receive the honor and the glory.
never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Amen, beautiful song. And now we invite you to continue listening to our daily Bible reading, which can be found in Hebrews chapter 9, 10, and 11. So says the word of God. Hebrews chapter 9. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now, when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services, but into the second part the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicated this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. 
it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices were offered, which cannot make him who performed the services perfect in regard to conscience, concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having attained eternal redemption for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living god and for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the internal inheritance for where there is a testament there must also of necessity be the death of the testator for a testament is in force after men are dead since it has no power at all while the testator lives therefore not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood for when moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law he took the blood of the calves and goats with water scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people saying this is the blood of the covenant which god has commanded you then likewise he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and according to the law almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in heaven should be purified with these but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these for Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now, once at the end of the ages he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed for men to die once but after this the judgment so christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly await for him he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation chapter 10 for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered for the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sin but in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins therefore when he came into the world he said sacrifice and offering you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure then i said behold i have come in the volume of the book it is written of me 
to do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But... The Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, Their sin and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversities. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great struggle with suffering, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Chapter 11 now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were famed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken he had this testimony that pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builders and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful, who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him, as good as dead, were born as many as the stars in the sky, in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him a figurative sense. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, and worshipped, leaning on top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were af not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy a passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, and by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. 
By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Japheth, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousnesses, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lion, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mocking and scourging, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God, having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. And now we beg that the blessed love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the companion and communion of the Holy Spirit, our great counselor, be with all of his children now and forever. Amen.